This is the face of someone who just rode 1,000 miles in under 24 hours. I'm so tired. This is known as a saddle sore 1,000 by the Iron Butt Association. And what do you get for completing this challenge? A certificate and some stickers. And the satisfaction of knowing that you finished the challenge. But first, the most daunting part of every challenge is starting. Good morning, beautiful people. I apologize for all of the traffic noise, but today is the day I am attempting an iron butt. We're here at the Shell in Clackamas, and the wonderful Carrie is going to uh, help me finish. <laughs> I normally hit a wall at about the 700 mile mark, and so I asked Carrie to uh, sacrifice some of her patience so that she can assist me. Um, finishing an iron butt. If you do not know uh, Carrie, she is an amazing long distance rider. She eats at the miles like their chow. That's not a good saying. Fine cheddar. Fine cheddar. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Sounds very sophisticated. Yeah. The daylight is coming, so we're gonna go. We gotta, we gotta do things. We got stuff to do. Miles to eat. My name is Carrie Miller. I'm a long distance endurance motorcycle rider. In addition to certified rides, such as riding a thousand miles in a day or crossing the country in under 50 hours, I also participate in um, long distance motorcycle rallies, uh, which are very much akin to scavenger hunts on motorcycle. And I've done very, very well in a number of those, including winning uh, the West Coast 66 rally. In 2018, I read The Man Who Would Stop at Nothing by Melissa Holbrook Pearson. It's a compelling book about not only Melissa's first foray into long distance endurance writing, but also tells a story of one of the most famous names in the Iron Butt Association, John Ryan, who completed multiple IBA feats, including the ultimate coast to coast in less than 30 days. Actually kind of did inspire me as well to, to sort of take this up. I had kind of known about the Iron Butt Association and I read, read Melissa's book and I thought, well, someday I'd, I'd like to do that. 2019, Wendy Crockett won the Iron Butt Rally, which is an 11 day scavenger hunt. We often refer to the, the Iron Butt Rally as um, 11 days, 11,000 miles. But Wendy Crockett uh, won in 2019. And she was the first woman to win the IBR. Those were, those were the two formative things that kind of like got me to get started in 2019 doing this. Back in 2019 is when I got the closest to actually hitting that 1,000 mile mark, following Carrie Miller back from an event in California. I stopped at 900 miles because I was home and I was exhausted, but missing that milestone by so little has been at the back of my mind since then. So it seemed natural to ask Carrie if she would help me meet this goal. Gas stop number two. Still feeling good, but this is still the easy part. I'm accustomed to this one. <laughs> Got a banana, down some electrolytes, back on the bike. Next stop, Baker City, and it's keeping me motivated because I get a sandwich when we get there. <laughs> Food is an excellent motivator. Many people attempt this, but not everyone is successful. And one of the biggest questions people who do choose to do these things are asked is, why? Why would you choose to do this? Yeah, why would I do this to myself? I think that the funny answer is, there's something just not right with me. I would ride somewhere and then camp, and then ride somewhere and camp. And soon it turned into, well, I want to go further and further, but how do I make that work with my schedule? So I started riding longer during my, my riding time. And then at some point I realized, what happened if I just didn't stop? How far could I go? And it kind of went from there. Well, stop number three. We stopped here in Baker City and uh, went to the Sweet Home Bakery, I think that's what it's called. It was so good. So if you make a stop in Baker City, absolutely make a stop at this bakery because it, mm, 
it was very much worth it. I feel like we're doing pretty good on time right now. At least that's how I feel right now. <laughs> Whether I'll feel this way in a couple hours is another story. <laughs> we're a third of the way there. We're, we're making progress. Stop number four. Also, if y'all aren't using Gas Buddy already, you should be. So far, I've saved like 80 cents every time we've stopped. There's nothing to stop at. To successfully document a saddle sore 1000, according to the IBA Association, these are the instructions. One, you must choose a safe route and use a mapping program to check your ride really is 1000 real miles. Two, collect, photograph, and track fuel receipts. This one is very important and is the part of the process most people find difficult. The receipts need to include the time, date, and address of your fuel stop. You need one to mark the start and and about every 200 miles or so. Photographs should be of your receipt next to your odometer to keep log of each stop. Lastly, send in your documentation for verification by the IBA. The IBA website emphasizes the risk involved with endurance riding. It is imperative you understand the risk you are taking and minimize the possibility of an accident by practicing safe motorcycle habits. No one, not even the most experienced long distance rider, can safely fight off fatigue. If you are tired, the only option is to stop and rest. Ignoring the symptoms of fatigue can be fatal. Fatigue is no joke. Many riders experience hitting a wall, the point at which you feel like you cannot continue. Probably the most common thing that stops people from completing one of these rides is fatigue. We, we're, we're really focused on making sure that we're doing this in a safe manner. So we really encourage people when they realize that they're fatigued to like get off the bike because at the end of the day, you're doing this just for yourself, right? It's a personal challenge. You don't get any you know, sponsorship deals, there's no prize money, it's none of that. It's just something that you do for yourself. So when you're tired, get off the bike. We've officially made it to the halfway point. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing great. <laughs> well, of course she's doing great. She does this all the time. <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm definitely starting to feel the road days a little bit. So we're taking a little bit of a longer break here at this Loves and Bliss, Idaho and we have found the glorious shade thanks to the giant sign. <laughs> Carrie's making grass angels. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do some stretches, eat some snacks, take a good break, and then we'll get moving again. Not pictured here is that I did nap there for at least 20 minutes. <laughs> Stop number six. We're in Snowville, Utah. Well over halfway. I'm still feeling pretty good, actually. I thought that I would have hit my wall by now, but knock on wood, still feeling really good. Just a quick gas stop here, and then we're gonna keep moving, and we're, we're doing it, we're doing it. There are many long distance riding tips that are very helpful on the IBA's website. I would say the thing that got me through the last tail end of this challenge was actually setting up small milestones for myself. 
I would tell myself if I could just make it the next hundred miles, I could get a small treat at the next gas station, and so on. Breaking it up into smaller bite-sized pieces definitely makes it feel way less challenging and a whole lot more possible. I think that the mental challenge is about on par with the physical challenges. The mental challenges really include just riding and having to be with yourself for that long, that length of time. Um, for a lot of us, when we ride shorter distances, right, like we're alone in our helmet, we're having fun, we're going through like twisties and curves and everything, and then we're stopping, you know, and like chatting with friends and whatnot. But if I'm doing a long distance riding challenge, I'm on that bike, I'm completely by myself, and I'm really only stopping for a few minutes at a gas station to get a bike to eat, get some gas and get back on the bike and keep, keep the wheels turning. Um, so just really honestly, it's, it's, it's being comfortable being with yourself for that long. And not everybody is. That's one of the mental strengths that people have to internalize is that sort of like that sense that this too shall pass, right? Like I'm, I'm cold, my butt hurts, I'm thirsty, hungry, tired, whatever it is. That's just a momentary state and you'll be fine. You can be tired, you can be wet, you can be cold. It's okay. That will change. We, we can fix that problem. Stop number seven. Hello, Wyoming. I have garnered a collection. <laughs> I'm actually still doing really good and I'm going to give Carrie all of the credit for that, for giving me little pep talks and being super patient with me when I stop and take pee breaks and stretch breaks and all of the things. But we're doing really good on time. Like I actually scheduled way more time for breaks than what we've been taking and I still feel really good. So yay. <laughs> I'm very impressed because I definitely would have hit a wall by now if I was by myself. So. We are in Rock Springs, Wyoming. We have like, we're 110 miles from Rollins. We're so close to the end and I'm finally hitting the wall of tired, you guys. <laughs> what mileage are we at now? 900 miles. 900 miles. So we're officially back. I'm back at like my current record, current personal record for longest miles of the day. So everything after this is new record, right? Yes. We're so close. I'm so close. I'm so tired, but we're so close. We got this. This is fine. Everything will be okay. Okay, it is 4.44 a.m. mountain time. I just finished a thousand miles, gosh darn. <laughs> I'm so tired. Everything is funny. I did the thing. I did it. We did it. <laughs> a thousand miles. In under 24 hours, Rollins, Wyoming from Portland, Oregon. Gosh darn. And there's still miles to go to the hotel room. So we're gonna go do that. Don't let tired Amanda fool you. It felt so good to get to the finish line. I felt so accomplished and so proud of myself for finishing what I set out to do. When you, when you actually finish one of these challenges, it's such an amazing feeling to actually accomplish it, especially if it's one that you haven't done before or if it's like a stretch goal for you. A lot of people say that they can do these things or that they, you know, someday they're going to do the thing, but I actually, I went out and I did it, you know? Stop saying one day I will dot 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 and make today day one. I did. 
Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button if you did. Huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon who make these videos possible. I wouldn't be able to do this without you. If you would like to get early access to videos like these ad-free before the rest of the world, you can do that over on Patreon for $1 a month. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here every single week and watching these videos. Question for my end screen crew, have you done a thousand miles in a day? Or participated in any of the other Iron Butt Association's general festivities? Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you guys later.